later at SNA 2018, one of the main talking points this year is the FFGX frigate program of the US Navy, with several exhibitors showcasing their conceptual designs. We covered the Lockheed Martin frigate design in our day one video, make sure you check it out if you haven't seen it yet. We start today's video on the General Dynamics Bath Ironworks booth. They are showcasing the F-100 frigate with their partner Navancia of Spain. Bath Ironworks FFGX design is based on the F-100 parent design, which is proven in service in the navies of Spain and Australia, and is evolved from the US Navy's FFG-7 Oliver Hazard Perry class. Good morning, Mark. Good morning. What can you tell us about your design for the proposal for the FFGX uh, program? So our company, Atlas North America, has submitted a proposal for the U.S. Navy's future frigate conceptual design. And our proposal is to use the design uh, based on the Tussenkrupp Marine Systems Miko A200 as the parent design from which uh, we can modify the ship slightly in order to meet the Navy's requirements. And we are teamed with not only Tussenkrupp Marine Systems from Hamburg, Germany, but also the shipyard VT Halter Marine down in Pascagoula, Mississippi. And then using a U.S. Navy naval architect, uh, the Columbia Group out of Washington, D.C. The MECO is absolutely a proven design. The MECO A200 design, have, six have been built. Four for South African Navy and two for the Algerian Navy. And so it is a proven design at sea, built as a warship from the keel up. And it is, has many advantages of being very modular, so the systems can be upgraded uh, fairly easily. And many interesting designs to uh, reduce radar reflectivity and also reduce infrared signature. It's a very exciting design for the Navy's next generation frigate. Right, and finally, why do you think this is the right frigate for the U.S. Navy? Well, the, it, it faces stiff competition from other offerers, but uh, our ship is based on a proven warship design where um, many other ships uh, are being modified from uh, a ship that is not a warship. So this, I think, has an advantage for us. Also, we have built six already, so we understand how to build this ship, and we have good ideas on the cost of this ship, so it is very low risk. This combined with the U.S. government's combat systems, which will be placed on the ship, which the U.S. government has already selected, again, low risk systems which have already been designed, we think that we can integrate this into the ship and deliver this ship to the Navy in, in quick time so the Navy can build up their fleet to greater numbers. Mark, thank you very much. It's always my pleasure to see you at Surface Navy Association. All right, Tim, what can you tell us about your design proposal for FFGX? Um, sure. So, as you know, we've modified our LCS design to meet the new requirements for the frigate. Um, we've taken some of the space and weight that's available on our design and repurposed that to meet the future requirements for the FFGX. One of the major missions that the Navy wanted to expand for the FFGX was local area defense. Uh, and so they've asked us to arrange vertical launch systems. They've asked for Mark 41 um, stripe length uh, launchers. And so we arranged them uh, last year uh, on the 05 level. This year uh, we put them forward and aft. The forward one is in the forward mission bay. The aft one is just aft of our flight deck. We have 16 cells uh, to support uh, both ESSM as well as SM2 or SM6. And uh, how confident are you that uh, your design is the right answer for the U.S. Navy? Uh, so we feel that the C-frame, the proven C-frame, it's been deployed, um, provides a low-risk, um, low-cost solution to the Navy's future requirements. Essentially, we're taking a proven design that has space and weight available in it, repurposing the, that uh, volume for the things the Navy wants. Um, our, our objective is to keep the cost down, keep the NRE down, but, but give the Navy exactly what they want for a future surface event.
Finkajer is bringing forward Frem, as you can see actually. It's a, it's a beautiful ship. She's um, the most modern and uh, uh, capable and in-service uh, frigate uh, right there now. They have uh, six ships already in service accumulating miles. Um, and she meets all the requirements that, that currently the U.S. Navy has uh, brought forward through the concept design RFP. And we're looking to turn her also into an even more uh, American version as we're working through the concept design should we be awarded it. it currently as is, the hull, the, the way it's, it's set up, has, has already, as we've seen at least, uh, does meet the requirements that, 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 uh, that uh, the U.S. Navy is setting up for speed, uh, for range, uh, for signature, uh, all, almost ticks almost all the boxes, especially on those five main categories that they've set up. Um, other than that, we definitely recognize some things uh, that, that we want to adjust. Uh, and on top of that, it has its own flexibility already, especially on the top line, to accommodate uh, whatever other uh, adjustments will be needed for the type of equipment and things that the U.S. Navy will look for us to, to put on top of her. Our yard in Marinette that has been building the, the, the LCSs, the littoral combat ships, is by now. We, it took us those years to actually set her up to be ready to be to serially produce ships. She's ready to be doing two, two and a half uh, ships per year. Uh, so uh, we're looking to actually uh, turn that, keep that facility warm and, uh, and get them all produced here in the U.S. with a strong U.S. team backing it up. we have here today are two elements of the surface warfare package. Uh, this is the surface-to-surface -surface missile module, uh, 24 Hellfire missiles. Uh, it's actually a U.S. Army program of record. Uh, actually works out a great deal for the Navy. Army has a huge inventory and are more than happy to uh, sell some to the Navy. So uh, this is the EDM uh, engineering development model two, uh, currently uh, about to enter the test phase for certification on uh, the LCS-5. Uh, we will do that test later uh, this year, from late spring, uh, early summer, and uh, everything goes according to plan we should get uh, the low rate initial production order before the end of the year. So 24 missiles, uh, the model, this is a weather shield, so obviously when uh, the time comes to fire the missile, the shield translates out of the way and off it goes. Uh, the entire module is actually prepped on the pier and then loaded uh, onto the ship uh, on the Freedom class ship, uh, the weapon zone is on the top deck uh, at the aft end. On the uh, Independence class ship, the weapon zone is actually in the on the fore deck behind the main deck gun. So, same modules, same interfaces. Uh, the nice thing about the mission package program is that everything's controlled by uh, uh, by uh, ICDs. So interface control documents, so it doesn't make a difference to the equipment, which ship it's on, operates on both ships. So the magic there is controlling the ICD, and so it's taken us a while uh, to get there, but we had very good luck working with, with both the Navy, the two shipbuilders. This is uh, the gun module, so this is a 30 millimeter gun. Uh, it fires just about any of the standard Navy 30 millimeter rounds. Um, we have delivered eight ship sets. We have an order right now for three more, which will all be delivered this year. So uh, the gun actually comes from a Marine Corps program. So on this program, we borrow shamelessly. Uh, the nice thing is uh, the gun has been all the initial startup issues that you always have on a program have been uh, ringed out, and so we're, it's a very reliable weapon. Uh, in the USS Coronado deployment in Singapore, uh, 16 months, we had 100% dispatch availability, which basically means every time the ship went, 
the guns worked. So it's a, it's an interesting program. Again, we do the we're, not only do we do the installation on the ship, but we're also responsible for the maintenance. So when the ship comes in after our deployment cycle, essentially the sailors say, here's what's broken, fix it. We go aboard and our guys take care of it. And obviously uh, the gun, very reliable due to the end, as exhibited by that 100% dispatch availability number.